Greetings, welcome back to my channel. This is Deja Bliss, where we talk about Kundalini awakenings, life force management, all that. I am in Omaha, Nebraska right now with my family on a road trip. And I wanna to talk to you guys about the alchemy of Kundalini. Now this is threaded through all of the data, right? All the information, all the videos that we talk about is these two opposing poles in the spine Ida and Pingala, the magnetic and electrical energy, the masculine, feminine, the sun, the moon, the ha, the tha, the good, the bad, right? The two polarities merging together to become one in this Kundalini activation, integration in your third eye, in your brain, becoming one brain instead of one hemisphere working, then the other, then the other, then the other, back and forth, back and forth, like a bipolar, schizophrenic, crazy human. Kundalini is about integrating the polarities and learning how to be the one in the both, in the many, in the various components of our human personality, right? So let me just illustrate that in real life, because sometimes it's hard to, like we understand the concept mentally, but then we go to live our lives and then we we're, we're not really doing it. So let me illustrate. Okay, so in the one video, we have the Motel 6. And on the next clip here, we are in Hotel Indigo on the fifth floor. Okay, this is just a really teeny example. I'll give you some other ones. That in life, you're gonna see both possibilities. It's not about like, oh, I'm gonna live in one of the polarities all the time. I'm gonna speak of it like that. I'm not gonna just only go to the nice hotels, let's say, or I'm not just gonna only like do budget hotels, okay? I'm gonna do both. I'm gonna find a way to thread the priority. Now for me on this trip, it was like, okay, I wanna mix economy with a great experience for me and my kids. Okay, so I don't want to just have trashy hotels the whole time, even though honestly, Motel 6s have gotten incredibly better over the years. <laughs> but I also don't want to just have the whole trip be super fancy hotels because it's hard to learn the value of one thing or the other. It's hard to um, really appreciate the nice big bathroom or whatever, unless you also have a bathroom that stinks or that makes noise, right? And I actually find that there's value in raising my kids that way and them seeing both sides of an equation and them having to hold themselves a certain way in the lobby of a nice hotel and also experience like the people smoke outside our room in a Motel 6 or the train goes by or whatever. So this is one example like, valuing both experiences. What is the value of staying in a Motel 6? Well, number one, and why I usually go there, is you can pull your car right up to the door and take all your bags right in. And then if you forgot something in the car, you just walk back out the front door. That's my favorite thing about a Motel 6, okay? My least favorite thing, and you also have to see the negatives and everything, even in the things that seem like the nicest thing in your life, the best relationship, you also have to be real about the negatives, okay? And accept them as part of the deal. The negative things about staying in a nice hotel on the fifth floor is freaking taking your bags all the way from your car, on one of those luggage racks, up a freaking elevator, down the hall, carrying all this stuff, making your kids push it, like, well, they don't have bellboys anymore. I guess that you pull, maybe some hotels do, but not here. But anyway, like dragging your stuff all the way through the hotel to your room, okay? And then if you forget something, you have to go all the way back to your car. That is not a plus in my mind. Even if you valet park, now someone's taking your car away and now you gotta go get something out of it. So either you have to unload your whole belongings up so you, the valet can take your car away, or you have to make sure and get it all into your room. It doesn't matter what amenities are in the nice hotel, you're still stuck on the inside of the hotel like a bug in a box 
and your car and your like freedom is far away. <laughs> so to me, that's the negative about being in a nicer hotel. And that's the positive about being in a cheaper motel. Okay, so that's one like alchemical experiment that I like to play with is the positive and the negatives of traveling, right? You can save money at the budget. You know, you're just in and out, your car's right there. You know, like, okay, maybe, maybe it doesn't smell as nice. Maybe like there's weird people staying there. Maybe the train is going by. So there's positive and negatives in every experience, right? In the nice hotel, it's nice, it's fresh. You know, the beds are big. You can see like tall ceiling, right? Like, you know, this one's like an interesting old building, but it's cute and they've got nice decor and it smells good. And there's like, you know, these floors that they put in that make them look like wood, even though they're not. <laughs> and they have all your hair products in the bathroom. Motel 6s don't have hair dryers usually. So anyway, these are just looking at like both sides of an equation. So in life, there's always both sides, okay? In your awakening experience, there's always both sides. It's so imperative to look at both sides and to value both sides, to see the downfalls in both sides and also to see the positive in both sides, right? There's always both going on. That's the polarity and the yoga mind is bringing them into one thing, okay? You can literally take anything in your life. You can say a shower, the positive and negatives of a shower. I mean, I have a kid who hates to take showers. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to get wet. It takes long to get dry. My hair is wet, you know, like whatever. You can come with, up with reasons why you don't want to take a shower. On the positive side, you get clean, you are refreshed, it's a renewal, you know, you can look all nice again or whatever. So there, like whatever it is in life, you can find that. And in our personal experiences, with any experience we're going through, with any relationship that we have, with any bodily thing that we're experiencing, we can always find both sides. And so with the Kundalini experience, that's the deal. Like we got, we got to find the positive and the negative. You know, if you're in a moment right now where you don't think there's anything positive about it, you're not thinking hard or deep enough. So take out a notebook and look at all the circumstances around the thing that you don't like. Like what are you doing because of that terrible thing? Because of that thing you don't like? What's that forcing you to do? What's that forcing you to be like? What is the effect of that that is positive? Because sometimes it's just that, well, I hurt so bad I couldn't do anything, so I just laid in my bed all day. Great, maybe your body needed to lay in bed all day. Maybe that was the whole point, to make you feel so bad that you couldn't go anywhere and you would just be with yourself. And you would just be in that mode where your body can introspect. Today I pulled reversed high priestess, reversed knight of pentacles and the hermit card. Every single one of those talks about inner reflection. And so this is the message I give to you. Are you listening to what is, yeah, okay. Like we have an easy time finding what's not right in a situation, but are we listening to what's also beautiful? And are we remembering that we can only continue to elevate our experience and go to the next level, evolve, up level, just like in a video game, go to the next level, if we get both coins, the positive and the negative. We gotta get, we can't just get one side of the coin. We get a coin in a game that has two sides, even if it's two dimensional, it's like, bling, it spins around. Like every experience has two sides. So in order to alchemize your reality, and initiate again and again to the next best life, the only way we can do that is by taking the poles and integrating them, seeing the beauty in both sides. Okay, so that's our assignment today. I'm on my way to Iowa. We're reaching the destination that we had in mind. Of course, this whole journey has had destination points. Beautiful walk uh, down to the water, let me give you some pictures of that.
and we'll see you again soon. Okay, everybody, enjoy doing this beautiful inner reflection journey today. It's a new moon in Gemini, so there's not a better time to reflect. The new moon is introverted and Gemini is all about the mind. So what a powerful day. And with Jupiter here, we can really expand into that energy, go deep, get the blessing, get the blessing. And remember, Gemini is the poles, it's the duality, it's seeing both sides, it's the twins, it's yes and it's no. So in every situation today, there's a twin, there's a twin force, in your body all the time, there's a twin force. In your consciousness all the time, there's a twin thought. There's lower mind, higher mind. There's yes and no, there's good and bad. We can be that point in the middle that brings both into account, honors both and finds that, if you will, that third path, which is the integration of both of them, that neutral point, that zero point, that God point, that sattva, that Om Namah Shivai, that Om, 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 three-eyed reality, Triambicum, and be, be, be. Okay, much love to you. Blessings. Until next time.